From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Parker. Jason has our Tuesday forecast, plus MTN fact checks former President Trump's Montana rally speech. But first, our top story. It was an unexpected night for campers at a Red Lodge RV park earlier this week as an out-of-state toddler girl was attacked by a bear while she was fast asleep inside her tent at Perry's RV Park and Campground. MTN's Alina Howder has the latest from Red Lodge. That bear attack happened just miles away from here at Basin Campground, and it has campers here on high alert. There's nothing quite like the peacefulness of the Montana wilderness. It's this beautiful country. But on Sunday night, this private campground just south of Red Lodge was anything but peaceful. As a three-year-old girl was attacked by a black bear while sleeping inside her family's tent. I can't imagine, I can't imagine what that is, how terrifying that'd be as a parent. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks is releasing very few details about the girl or her condition, but says it happened at about a quarter to 10. She is being treated in the hospital in Billings. She went to the hospital in Red Lodge first and then um, sent over to Billings afterwards. While it's still unknown why the bear attacked the tent, Webb says the bear was likely lured to the campsite because of attractants. There are campfires, if the food is out and about and everything like that, it's tendency to draw some some wild animals in. It's something Billings couple Lisa and Don Wilcox know all too well. Tents are very vulnerable. Uh, we used to sleep in a tent all the time, and we kind of graduated from that to the trailer here. Which is why it's so important to be bear aware. We've got about two or three cans of bear spray that we bring with us, and we like to hike around this area, so we carry that with us when we hike. A lesson Eric Benes from North Dakota learned this Monday. Actually, we're running into town tonight, and we're hiking tomorrow, so I'm probably going to pick up some, some uh, better defense. <laughs> defense strategy. In Red Lodge, Alina Howder, MTN News. On this Tuesday afternoon, we already have clouds pushing into the western half of Montana, northwestern Wyoming, two areas of rain and thunderstorms over Yellowstone National Park. A little bit of rain around West Yellowstone itself. Not much for Beaverhead or Madison County, pushing into Gallatin and Park County, too, but very little has fallen thus far. Also, some spotty rain showers between Missoula and Butte, but again, a lot of places a trace at best, a couple hundredths of an inch here and there. And as far as northwestern Montana is concerned, we have a line of showers and storms from areas around Plains toward Kalispell over Flathead Lake and all the way toward Cutbank. But again, nothing heavy yet, but we have more chances for some showers and thunderstorms and other changes in the extended forecast. Our 7 8 coming up in a few minutes. Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Coroner Leo Dutton says three bodies have been recovered from the site of a Cessna 182 plane crash west of Augusta. The plane went down Thursday afternoon in the area of Crown Mountain in the Scapegoat Wilderness. Dutton told MTN the identities of those on board are still unknown. He said, do fire from the crash. Investigators will have to use DNA to identify the three people on board, and it could take weeks to get those results. It is. It is terrible. I, I just, I wish I could tell the family positively who was in that plane, but I cannot until I get the DNA back from the crime lab. It is unclear exactly when the plane crashed. According to Dutton, the aircraft was traveling from Pullman, Washington to Great Falls when it went off the radar screen at 12.30 p.m. Salt Lake City Air Traffic Control saw the plane was overdue and started notifying local jurisdictions. And around that time, two people near the crash site saw it and called the scene. The National Transportation Safety Board is leading the investigation into what could have caused this crash. Montana State University President Wadad Cruzado announces her plans to retire next year. Cruzado has been at the helm for 15 years, becoming the school's 12th president in 2010. In a letter to the university, she said being president has been an incomparable honor, holding the memory close to her heart. Under her leadership, the university set records in nearly every major metric, including enrollment, fundraising, athletics, graduation rates, and campus expansion. Commissioner of Higher Education Clayton Christian will conduct a search for the next university president on behalf of the Montana Board of Regents. 
MTN and Scripps News partnered with PolitiFact to fact check former President Trump's Montana speech. Our MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian takes a closer look at some of the claims made by President Trump Friday in Bozeman. PolitiFact Editor-in-Chief Katie Sanders says as the presidential campaign has heated up, they've been taking a closer look at claims from both the Republican and Democratic tickets. She says many of the statements that former President Trump made during his Friday night rally in Bozeman are ones they've heard multiple times before. But because it was our first time fact-checking Trump's appearance in that state and partnering with Montana news outlets, we wanted to highlight some of those repeats for anybody who was hearing it for the first time. On Saturday, PolitiFact followed up on five of Trump's statements from his Bozeman rally. Three of them dealt with one of his main topics, immigration. The illegal aliens are stampeding into America by the millions and millions. They're coming from prisons, they're coming from jails. PolitiFact says federal data isn't complete, but it identifies just over 100,000 non-citizens with criminal convictions arrested by Customs and Border Protection since 2021, and not all of them were let in. Sure, some migrants who do manage to cross the border do have criminal backgrounds, but that is not the millions and millions. Trump also touted his economic record as president. I handed Kamala and Crooked Joe a surging economy with no inflation. We had no inflation. We had nothing. Inflation was lower during Trump's presidency than Biden's, but it never hit zero. And the lowest point was at the height of the COVID pandemic. We know from covering economic claims over the years from both sides, there's a lot of cherry picking involved. Brandon Gregg, a business owner and legislative candidate from White Sulphur Springs, attended the rally. He said he didn't think fact-checking was unreasonable, but that people should take it with a grain of salt. He said in many cases, Trump is using rhetoric in service of a valid point. Yeah, you kind of have to zoom out and be like, hey, these overall, this is kind of the macro situation. These are the policies we're going to be pushing. These are the policies we're against, but at a macro level. During the rally, Trump also alluded to fact-checkers. Kamala, sometimes referred to as Kamala. You just get about nine different ways of pronouncing the name. And because the press is so dishonest, no matter how you say it, they'll say you were wrong. You were wrong. I don't care if I get it right. Actually, I couldn't care less. You can find all of PolitiFact's recent fact-checks on both parties on their website, politifact.com. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. It's no secret that politicians tend to bend the truth, and it happens with candidates on both sides of the aisle. But the question is now, how did we get here? And does it matter? Uh, nice girl. It's almost like we've been divided into two teams. There's the blue team and the red team. In a time where America is more divided than ever, I would say that I align myself with the policies that President Trump put forth. I probably um, align more with the Democratic Party. It might not come as a surprise that voters often listen for what they want to hear. I got to like Tim Sheehy a lot to be here. I have to right now, it's all a popularity contest. But when did that popularity contest begin? We've re really evolved. To want to be part of a tribe because when you're part of a, a tribe or a group you're you're safer dr eric arzubi with frontier psychiatry says this behavior is rooted in human nature with people searching for their sense of belonging nobody wants to be excluded right everybody wants to belong to a team and that's why he believes politicians get away with lying as often as they do i think all of us are are vulnerable to what's called confirmation bias in other words we see the world a certain way. We hear information that kind of validates or confirms it. We're like, oh, okay, good, we're good. Arzubi says voters from both parties are so rooted in their beliefs that they're inclined to ignore or excuse any false facts. It happens absolutely on both sides, right? Because again, they'd rather be hearing, hey, that was an awesome speech, Trump did a great job, or amazing speech by Kamala Harris. A frustrating reality for voters around the state. This divisiveness that we're seeing right now in society is scary to me. It's so frustrating. As an American voter, I believe no matter what side you're on. Anxiousness and uncertainty, the only real guarantee every four years. It's really hard as an American, if you're paying attention, to know what's true and what's not. We don't need these people bashing each other. We need what's best for the American economy and what's best for the American people. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.